It is 1 June, year of our Lord, 2022. This is RPT. I'm your host, Chingo Bling. Chingo Bling with the big tamarindo. We have producer Big Rob. What's Sass. up, man? I don't know if you're in frame. Yeah, I might need to scooch over a little bit to your left. Okay, so I'll move over just, here. Yeah, just a smidge. Boom, there we go. Got me working today, orale, Robert. Orale, orale, orale. <laughs> dale, dale. Uh, Legalized Freedom Tour. Uh, first of all, before I get into my tour dates, fire-ass episode, bro. Yeah. We just had... Um, Darius Sanders of Sanders Tactical Performance, mm-hmm. where you can get informed and empowered and educated and be one of the cool, badass motherfuckers. Uh, more of like, almost like, a, what is it, the sheepdog? Sheepdog response, yeah, that's always what I think of. Uh, Tim Kennedy and his team. Yeah, man. Um, make sure you listen all the way to the end. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. And um, it, it's powerful stuff, man. It's power- I didn't want to get into the politics of it, so this is it was strictly like a just a... Hey man, you 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 inform people about guns yeah. and stuff. Yeah, business and education, basically. Yeah. So if you're a two A enthusiast, if you're curious about firearms and and what is the law and and just why, for example, why ladies should definitely be well versed. Yeah. And if know. you're local too, he's the guy to see. But dudes too, not just ladies. I mean, shit. I mean, you dude, ten year olds. I love that ten and up. Yeah. Like I can't wait for the kids to turn that age where we can take them train them. Yeah, we already told um, Mickey. We're like, hey pretty soon yeah get ready that's perfect time yeah Mm -hmm. high school are Mm -hmm. you joking me i wonder what they let them shoot with i guess depending on i guess it depends maybe if they have experience i would say like a 10 year old versus a 13 year old okay just maybe if they have like like what type of gun basically i have no idea okay well interesting but hey first i think me and my wife gonna go uh and then we'll start getting more people involved hell yeah so legalized freedom tour i'm headed to san angelo texas june Third, get your tickets now, chingobling.com. Right after that, Odessa, Texas at the Ector Theater, June 4th. Uh, my boy Ro down there, he has a print shop. He made a whole bunch of posters and flyers. And they look amazing. Got a QR code. Tol pinche pelo, hey. tol jale. Austin, Texas, June 9th, we think. All right? There's been a lot of issues with Cap City, and we're mm. trying to see what's going on with the permits, and they're trying to open up. Albuquerque, why well, I always got disclaimers on all my shows, bro? <laughs> That's pretty 2022, soon, Pretty man. soon it's going to be like uh, World Health Organization, uh, Harambe Pox. Uh, yeah. Everybody locked down because the World Health Assembly yeah. decided to vote on a couple of things they're that we'll like, talk about later. They're like, all right, AI is, uh, we're going to let AI just, just do don't leave your house. I wait. My, yeah, my the feds, look at that. <laughs> CIA in this bitch. Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, June 15th. El Paso, June 16th through the 18th. Irvine, California, July 6th. Ontario, California, July 7th. El Centro, California. Looking forward to that one, July 9th. So many more cities and dates uh, like Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison. Get your tickets now. Chingobling.com. Sass. All right. So before we get into today's uh, interview with uh, Mr. Sanders from Sanders Tactical Performance, I got to see how your weekend went. What's okay. good? I'll just tell you about Sunday. All right, DJ. It'll help explain. It'll help explain the, the PD light and the shades. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's Memorial explain day going you know right i'm saying pour out about a, a, a two ounce and that sprite get that bitch muddy look at that Ooh, classic look at, cup look at them electrolytes swirling around bitch finna be muddy anyway Co- collector's edition had, cup. To, had to pop the seal on the pedialyte all right so yesterday sunday um uh, our 10 month old woke up extremely early so we're up super early and we're just like man church from youtube sounds really good right now we're like, I don't think we're gonna be able to make it, Jesus. <laughs> and um, but we went, and we're glad we did. Uh, the girls even got to play um, right there at the park, right after and stuff. So it was, it was, it was a great morning, good family time. And then uh, basically just come home and just try to like lay on the couch for about 10, 15 minutes, and then start getting ready for uh, Mighty Soul's uh, little cousin. He just graduated high school, nice out in Katy. So. Uh, we went out there. It was cool. Ate a whole bunch of wings and shit. Uh, celebrated Andrew's graduation. And then it was like pretty much get home again and now start prepping because, uh, you know, the Grupo Obsesión, mm-hmm. they sing. Iran, 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 the messed up thing is uh valentina my my she's about to be four that that was her jam when it first came out so she <laughs> i have it on my phone <laughs> <laughs> run, run, run. Papi, 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 papi. Papi. Run. Run. i should have showed it to them but shout out to tony and the whole gang uh dude 73 million views on la troquita holy shit and uh 
they hit me up. They're like, hey, man, we got a new single out. Y'all go stream it right now. It's called El Sugar. El Sugar. It is super jamming. Um, I- I'll play it. I'll- you got Apple Music, Spotify, just Obsession. Azuquita. Man, bro. El Sugar. It's a sugar daddy. So they wanted Tio Juventino to play the sugar daddy and throw out all this money. And they had all these chicks and stuff. And I'm like, bro, I'm married. I'm 42. <laughs> and... Uh, it, it, my boy Frank rode with me in case anybody got out of line and stuff. You know, he was faking like it was behind the scenes and shit, but really, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was That's, ready. Really, it was, you know what I'm saying? We we in this bitch. What it do? Um, the DJ was even playing, because it was like a nightclub. Mm. And then next, like the green room, where it had no AC, by the way. So Oof. when you see the video, it's going to be very humid. Uh, but it's going to look lit. Um, so we shot the, they shot the video to El Sugar, where I did like my cameo, basically. And he even had this... Uh, this dude, I don't know if I can call him dude, but he probably don't care um, because he cross dresses. Dude named Pamela Show. Okay. Pamela Show from Monterrey, and apparently, like my boy Frank is like, "Yo, man, hey man, that's that's pop, that's Pamela Show, <laughs> that's Pamela Show." He's like, "This dude's super viral on TikTok, and he's like, he's from Monterrey. He be interviewing chicks on the street and like like roasting them and all this crazy stuff." And uh, yeah, dude. So yeah, they're gonna be like Chingo. He, he's good with the train. He's an ally. Like he he down with the trans community. That's what bit. you did over the weekend on Sunday or Saturday? Last night. Last night. Oh my dude, god, dude! Last night. Yeah, last night. Well, we're recording this Monday morning. Yeah, earlier than most weeks. Yes. So, um, yeah, dog. Last night. So, so basically, the plan was show up at the club at midnight. We'll be in the green room. We're gonna get you out twenty minutes. We're Never gonna get you out twenty minutes. Never happens. It's just like little mini debacle after little <laughs> mini small debacle. It's like, oh, we gotta scoop up all the money again so y'all can throw it again and go call the chicks. They, they, they're, they're the like a lot, you know. It was hot. That egg, that the wig was itchy. But anyway, is it, was it your hoof? I didn't even drink. The only reason I got on shades is just because it was late. Like it's two in the morning, and then I still got to come home and like shower all over again i need to get you was, one of those eye cream uh, little things you just do underneath your eye, eyelids when you look like you need some sleep yeah no i need that like every day and i was so sleepy by the time i, I crashed out i didn't even take my zmas that probably would have helped this morning you're probably already dead tired like, i and, don't think you needed it yeah everything from the baby you know you gotta go to church you know so it's just a lot of in and out of the car and then you, you gotta go to katie man graduation that's a big deal all the fam was there uh not complaining at all if anyone's listening <laughs> Um, and then, and then after that, hurry up, get ready and, uh, go be in a nightclub. Some, it's just not my element. And then they played, uh, the Bo Bundy. There was a dude that looked just like Bo Bundy on stage. Nice. And then there was me. What, they play Uno Co or what? Yes. Nice. Uno, dos, tres. I had to watch a boy, I grab a mic. Uh. And then I'm like, okay, there's no monitors. I can't really hear where I'm at <laughs> in the song. And I was like, okay, that was a fail. <laughs> I hope there's video of that. Yeah, probably. Somewhere. Um, but anyway, that's why I got the Pedialyte and, uh, you know what I'm saying, in the shades. And so stuff. what time did you get to sleep? It might have been like 2.30 or something. After you like just hurry up and snack, throw some peanut butter on a little Ezekiel, mm-hmm. a yeah. slice of Ezekiel. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Keep that Ezekiel on the fridge, right? Yeah, you have yeah, to. you got to. Keep you it fresh. To. You got to. And then what time did you wake up? Uh, Again, like about 7.30. Not too bad. Yeah. But then I get here and I hear and I'm like, oh, did we miss schedule? I, well, this? here's the thing, y'all. Patreon.com forward slash <laughs> <laughs> Red Pill Tamales. Um, basically, it's one of those where like I'm still a human and it's like, hey, you got to run to Walgreens real quick and because uh, just get a little pack of diapers and get picked this up and a little baby list. Yeah. Just yeah. little things. Oh, we running low on this and just grab a little detergent for now until we get to go to H E B. And then it's like, oh yeah, and I gotta take the trash out and you know, then I gotta swing the kettlebell about ten times, hit the weed about once. Uh just to get the blood flowing. <laughs> That's another reason why you might need shades. Did you make it to jiu-jitsu last week? No, sir, bro. No, sir. No. no. And coach even texted me. He's like, hey man. And I was like, uh, hey dog, uh staff, <laughs> everything 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 every time jeff texted you yeah he just hit me up like hey what's up what's good bro i don't even know like i i wanted to already be like i don't know if y'all notice uh my attendance is bad (laughs) and now we're moving so i might even have to switch uh gyms and stuff oh yeah true. yeah but but here's my point the reason i said patreon.com forward slash red pill tomatoes is the the dream and the goal is be at work from home yeah. You know, we want to have the, uh, you know, the studio, you know, like be able to not have to travel as much. Like, you know, no offense, but a lot of these cities where it's like you got me going up there on a Wednesday or a Sunday, 
maybe I won't go 2020, probably not happen 2023 you know yeah. but if it's like the actor theater in Odessa like bro you have to go you know what I mean yeah. you're doing a whole weekend in Dallas bro like I love I love performing but it's so much traveling it'd be feeling like a traveling salesman yeah no for sure you feel like a traveling salesman stand-up comedian bro like uh because it's just so much getting on and off of planes and then what's gonna happen once this jet fuel goes up Mm-hmm. It's just going to be more and more inflation. The ticket price got to go up. You know what I mean? The t-shirt supply is hard to get. You know, you're trying to bring merch, but you got supply chain and the cartons in Asia. World Eagle, Klaus Schwab. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, the who? We got to sign a treaty with the who? <clears throat> Damn, woke up on fire this morning. Lack of sleep, but still on it. You know, they hit you with the uh, the Harambe, and it's just, uh, oh, Bill Gates want to, uh, he want to have all the farmland, greedy <laughs> ass. Oh, he want to invest in, in, in dude. There is a, bro, um, the real Anthony Fauci, mm-hmm. the book. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have the audio book. I was told <laughs> by someone on a podcast that listen to the last chapter where he basically says like um, Bill Gates, like just once they did a bad story on him, I forget which publication, the LA Times or somebody did a bad story on him. They were like, hey, his little experiments with vaccines in Africa, like he's making money off this shit. And it's not helping the community and he and he made it to where the metric of how you measure um i guess economic status of a country like you know the third world second world whatever whatever the way you kind of measure it the metric went from do they have clean water running water like are people starving to death is it famine you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like it you would think you'd look at like well what's their gdp per capita um so on and so forth like certain metrics like that he changed it to well what's their vaccination status what he's he totally bought them off i guess and then once the la times or somebody like that did a hit piece a lot of a story like an expose this was what this man is doing he's doing some shady shit in africa on these kids and he's trying to he's all about this vaccine shit and this is on YouTube, so fuck. I don't know what's going to happen to yeah, this Yeah, we're channel. back. Welcome back, everybody. If I'm you saying too much. <laughs> if you missed the last couple episodes, we had a strike on the channel. Yeah, sorry, y'all. And I know what I'm saying is real spicy for the algorithm. But let me wrap up that thought. What did he do after the expose from the publication? He went and spent, I forget what it was. I got to go l- listen to the chapter. But it's like $250 million, $350 million, like something billion. I don't know what it was. But he just bought off a bunch of the press. And it's like, okay, we're hush-hush now. And <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. You know, jeez, man, I still haven't gotten that book. I guess I have to really check it out. That's the I, Robert Kennedy book, right? Yeah. So I'll the listen. Kennedy. Let me listen to it, and I'll let you know, it, like, if you need the hard copy or not. Uh, Don got a a gift from her office uh, in the mail the other day, and she opens it, and it's Jocko's book, Extreme Ownership. And I've heard great Extreme things ownership. about that I book. Have the audio book. Do you? Too. Yeah, but man, who read? Does he read it? Uh huh. I okay. think it's him and the co-author. Okay. I believe. What, what do you think about it? I mean. Is it one of those? Honestly, this is it? this is what happens with me. That's why I need to like, I need to finish all my goddamn books. I know because even if it's an audio book, you be thinking it, you're gonna get through it quicker. But what ends up happening is it's like the motherfucking book is eight hours long. True, or and then you're doing other shit while you're trying. And to then other to fire books. Oh, the the bite the laptop from hell. Uh, let me pull up library. Oh, basic economics. I've been raving about that one raving and raving and then like t- another time so dismantling america unrestricted warfare interesting stuff but sometimes the reader's boring yeah. oh no go zones by raheem kassam marxism by thomas so anyway what, what book was i extreme ownership see we got so many good ones in trump time by peter navarro pandemia by alex berenson oh yeah extreme ownership yeah we just made a so summer started today right so mm-hmm. we have a every day when the kids get home from camp and we're all you know done with our, our day day they have like a set of chores they have to do right and uh 20 minutes of reading is like for everybody so as a family like go pick the book you want to read go pick your the room you want to sit in and we have to read every day for at least 20 minutes 20 to 30 oh, minutes. oh man i need to implement that got to man because... it's really hard for all of us don and i included you know but if we make it a rule and set the precedent then we have to stick to and it. and dog we got some fire ass books you know uh-huh. how mighty so bought like the one of them transgender books mm-hmm. and whatever one she bought a few yeah it was a couple of them but one of them though was by dr deborah so soh and she keeps it all the way 100 when she was on rogan like anytime she does an interview she's like i'm a scientist and she's like you got xx chromosome you got xy chromosome you got male you got female and she's like there are distinctions there's like all this 
you could pretend and, and I'm supposed to this. She's like, I'll call an individual by whatever they want to be called. I'll call you your little pronouns. She, she's like, but you can't reshape society for this thing that isn't a thing. Yeah. And you can't miseducate the kids by confusing them saying, if you don't call Timmy a he or a she or whatever, or they, you're going to get hit with a, a suspension and a sexual harassment. We got so much stuff to talk about this week. Uh, so we'll get to this episode. We have another guest yeah. uh, lined up for this week. And then, uh, yeah, man, hopefully just rock and roll into June. Uh, Patreon did really well this month. We had new patrons. We have a bunch of new people in the Discord. We have people who have been in the Discord but just haven't interacted starting to interact. So that's a big one. That's huge. That's a big one. Yeah. We got um, them, yeah. And also agent of the month. Hey, that's awesome. To say. Okay. So it's supposed we're supposed to have decided by today, but it's a close race. You got Giovanni in the lead, and then uh, Fresco Kicks and Juan Vic Stoner are kind of tied now, but it's been going up and down all weekend yes. for all three of them. Yeah, I've seen the campaign. I'm seeing how Fres <laughs> Fresco Kicks is coming into the debate understanding that the, the show is the campaign. Once you become agent of the month, I mean, you could kick your feet up. You know, you can <laughs> shuffle paperwork, be a bureaucrat in the swamp. <laughs> you want to you wanna slow walk your constituents you want to just sit and design all day pretend like you're not stealing company yeah. time that's fine smoking weed you know pretending like you're just getting away with yeah. it no one knows buying sneakers but you know what leather sneakers at uh, that. you know just here you know when she became agent of the month you know you know she she held it down <laughs> for the first week she held it down <laughs> you know but the campaign the build-up it's the it's the lit it's the lead up to the to the runoff. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, disgruntled uh, agents that were like, how come I'm not in the mix? I'm like, hey, it was a hard vote. It was yeah. a hard decision to make. I mean, think about it, bro. Juan Big Stoner, they did him like Bernie on the last one, bro. They started doing him like Bernie on the this one. And he even said, he's like, bro, I was most qualified. This shit is rigged. <laughs> and then we got people calling uh, somebody else, Hillary and someone else, you know, Obama. So uh, it gets intense in there. If you're not in there, you're really fucking missing out. Yeah, I mean, it's a meme war. Inf oh, it's information it's disinformation somebody said they're like giovanni voted for uh biden and i'm like did he for real <laughs> you did ask that he's like who voted i for keep him? asking i'm like where's the answer is this for real give me the facts where's really? the transcript did he really or he they did. just throw him up uh, he did i believe so he, he got did. Red, so he got red pill right after you know that's a good question how do you vote vo that's vo a great question that is that's probably the question on this uh, you know campaign. what i got i'm gonna check it right now before we wrap up but i uh, remind everybody where you're gonna be next jingo i'm headed to san angelo that is, man, I love West Texas. I love that whole area, man. Um, because we just did Abilene and Lubbock. Yeah. San Angelo, Texas, June 3rd. Odessa, Texas, June 4th. Can you imagine if I could have routed all that together? Where it was like Canyon Lake, Abilene, La San, A San Angelo, Lubbock, Odessa. Then come home. Then I'd miss my kids. But uh, patreon.com forward slash Red Pilt Miles. Get your tickets now. Get your tickets now at chingobling.com. So uh, as it stands today, it's June 1st. We were going to make the decision today, but we have 12 votes. So you have to get 15 votes to qualify mm -hmm. for the finals, where Chingo and I would deliberate and decide who the agent is. But Giovanni's got 12. Uh, Fresco Kicks got nine. And Juan, uh, Big Stone, Juan Magnificent Stoner has okay. 10. Mm -hmm. So it's between Giovanni, which is huge because he, I mean, he had three votes on Saturday for Juan Big Stoner. And now people are rallying behind... Uh, Old See, Marcus Old Jr. Yeah, like you know, or like, Thomas Old Jr. Rather. Like for example, like for example, Fresco kicks. He on that TRT, so he he be coming in hot, super hot, very aggressive. That's alpha, very Trumpian. That's yeah, that's very alpha. That's you know, that's grabbing by the uh, whatever, whatever's there. I mean, it seemed like pre op post op doesn't matter. And and I mean, and he has proven to be about that action. Hundred percent. He has he has shown. I wouldn't upload pictures like that too much, uh, Fresco. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah, Discord because sure. you don't know who who if the feds got a back door on that bitch. But, but yeah, Fresco has proven upon many occasions to be about that action. Yeah, we've already seen how they're coming after specifically Discord for things like for groups. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Man, so that go. that's what happened, and people were screenshotting those uh, those articles and you know people talking about in the terms and conditions for groups like uh, 8chan, 4chan, Discord. We yeah. have to really be vigilant and blah blah blah. So, I mean, ain't nothing going on over here except the Tia, yeah. the, the Tamil intelligence agency. Stand back, stand by. Puros tamales and freedom. You know what I'm saying? Pura right. masa y liberty. Let's get to our episode today, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for sure. You're gonna love it, Sanders tactical performance all right guys quick break we want to talk about friends of the podcast uh this is actually like the fuel source the energy source the focal source of the podcast magic mind 
they're showing so much love to all the members of the Thea. Uh, they decided to continue to work with us. They dig the podcast. They like that uh, people are digging Magic Mind and all that it has to offer. Don't forget to shake it because you get all that good green stuff at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's very natural, so you got to shake it, dog. Where can they go? You go to magicmind.co forward slash chingo. When you check out, use promo code chingo. You get 20% off. And if you subscribe and you join the subscription where they send it to you every month, Bro, how much percentage you get? Cuarenta por ciento. Forty, the big four zero. Yeah, man, it's a really good deal. Actually. That's damn near half. Yeah, it's a really, really good deal. I don't miss a day. Don doesn't miss a day. You take yours every day we record, and any chance that you have it, you take it on the road with you. It really is a fantastic product. Yeah, so uh, it's a it's a game changer. We really we really dig it. Uh, it's just a little shot. It's a herbal supplement. It's just two ounces. You get to do more and stress less. And they're friends of the podcast and they're hooking up listeners of the podcast. So you got to support friends of the podcast. Get us get us magicmind.co forward slash chingo. Get 20% off or use the promo code chingo. You get 40% off if you're joining the subscription. Boom. Sass. Red Pill Tamale special guest. We have um, Mr. Sanders from Sanders Tactical Performance. What's up, Big Dime? Man, thank you, man. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yo, man, uh, everybody go follow him on Instagram right now i think that's how i discovered you and and all the information and education and um you know all the training and everything that you do when it comes to um you know firearms and stuff like that so tell them your instagram so i'm darius sanders everybody uh sanders tactical performance uh on instagram yeah man great follow so just real quick man let's i want to dive into this at the top um right. if Okay, so you obviously you have a tactical performance business. So, what is your elevator pitch like? What if you if you were in an elevator with somebody, you just had to tell them, "Look, ma'am or whoever, like this is why uh -huh. this is why you should really you know prepare yourself with this." Yeah, um, I always start with um, crime um, because at the end of the day, um, the reason why uh, most of us in society own firearms or want to get martial arts want to be able to learn Brazilian jiu-jitsu or whatever is protection we want to be able to protect ourselves against people who want to hurt us uh for no reason or certain reasons that we can't understand normally what i tell people is hey it's bad out here you know it's like it's people out here who want to hurt you it's people out here who want to take stuff that you have it's people out here that want to hurt your your wife your kids and the only way you can stop them or push them back you got to show them some, some resistance. If I got a guy here, he can go buy an AR-15 at the store, but he might still, he might try to rob me with the AR-15. Guess what? I might want an AR-15 too. Mm -hmm. So I always, I always try to tell people, you know, especially for the ladies, you know, get a gun, but then also not only get that gun, but that's the physical, get your mental right, you know, pray about it, you know, meditate, um, keep your mind clear or as clear as possible, you know, because at the end of the day, that guy is going to go call you and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to hit you up. You know, after you leave the gym, after you go pick up the kids, after you had a long day at work, I'm going to come try to rob you before you get out, before you go in the house. So that's, I tell people, you got to be prepared. And then I feel like we're, we're one of the best companies to help people be prepared to be able to protect their families, their friends, their coworkers, the community. And then that's how we can you know, mm -hmm. decrease violence. And you're an uh, ex-police officer, correct? Yeah, so I worked for uh, HPD a few years. Um, it, it was good. It was cool. I loved it. Um, but after a while, I said, hey, you know what? I, I have another purpose. You know, uh, most, of, most of my time was uh, inside the uh, HPD jail, which I saw a lot of stuff. Saw a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, good stuff, bad stuff. Um, but I felt my purpose switched somewhere in there. Somewhere in there, God was like, you know what? I got something better for you. I got somewhere, you know, I always talk to my homeboys who still work for the department. I say, hey, man, look, if you get to complaining too much about the situation or position you're in, <laughs> excuse me, it's time to change it. Get, get you something different. And um, I saw, you know, victims who were, you know, defenses, they couldn't do anything, you know? And so I was like, you know, maybe if I sacrifice 
this little period of time and jump off the cliff and get into my own business, maybe I can reach more people before they become victims. And I, you know, that's what I, that's what I, that's what made me switch it over. Mm -hmm. And um, like you just said, uh, I think you said defenseless. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. such a powerful word when it comes to like persuasion and how to look at this uh, debate. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Do you yep. want to be helpless? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to yeah. be a Do you want to be a soft target, or you want to make true. it hard for a motherfucker? You know what I'm talking about? Like, true, 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 hey, true. white white thing I got on shades, bro. I was in that club at two in the morning. It's a long story. I'm 42. <laughs> I have no yeah, business. Yeah. I have no business being out in the club at two in the morning. <laughs> uh, grandpa Shitty wanted. Me. I would have came. Gra I would have came. Like, Should have hit me. Not Man, Grandpa needed his porridge and his recliner. <laughs> Why this music so damn loud? <laughs> Actually, my uh, hearing fucked up, so I was like, yeah, it sounds pretty good up here. That's why your headphones are always louder than everybody's. Yeah, man. It's, <laughs> if, if we need an earwax specialist uh, after we finish talking tactical. Right. Uh, we need to have an earwax <laughs> uh, specialist. But hey, man. Um, how long, by, by the way, how long has uh, your tactical business been, in, been operating? Man, I've been doing this. It's been seven years now. I actually started this while I was in the department because I had... Uh, sergeants and lieutenants who were into training and licensing. So my business really started just from licensing. So I was piggybacking off an officer and he was doing it. And I was helping him out, but I was already into guns. I just was training like my family, like my sister was my first client, mm -hmm. right? Me and my sister going to the gun range every, every Sunday. And uh, I say, okay, come on, mom. Let me try to get my mom in, you know, try to let me get my cousin in. And then I have other officers who were struggling with gu just gun, simple gun manipulation. Like, man, what's up with this? And let me help you with this. Let's go to the gun range. Let me show you this. And um, a couple of gun rangers were like, man, you, you bring a lot of people to help out. And one of the guys was like, you should start you a business. And I was like, nah, you know, I don't know what I want to do, but that ain't it. And the more people started coming to me, hey, help me out like you help such and such out. And then I said, okay, you know what? Hold on, God. I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And from there, I started, and I say, I want this to be a family business. I want my family to be able to, we all go to work together to an office, to a gun range, or to a gun store, and doing it together, making money together. Because that's how a lot of these other businesses, you know, they come up, they family. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I'm trying to get a name. And I was watching, watching a guy shooting. And his his name was Performance Center. And I said, you know what? I want to do Sanders Tactical Performance. Mm -hmm. And you know, I never look back. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, congratulations. And I feel like you're helping fill a void. You know, if if you're from the community, people are gonna be like, "Hey, it's somebody I could trust." You know, like, yeah. or, or he reminds yeah. me of me. We're into the same stuff. You know, it's yep. not it's not feeling like, oh, I gotta walk up in the NRA thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. you don't, yeah, you yeah. don't gotta feel out of place. But besides the word um, defenseless, defenseless and helpless, I think another word that that was popping in my head when you were talking about how like really, you know, in terms of like educating, you know, women and females is like empowering empowerment yeah. like i have nothing but daughters like this is what's standing this is what's standing between the dangers of the world and my family right here this, right, this little bit of jujitsu <laughs> this little yeah, this little definitely. bit of jujitsu okay. right here and uh and these and the second amendment um but i would want well, well i do first of all my wife way more well-versed with a yeah. <laughs> she'll come she, she way more correct yeah she used to have her license and all that and i remember yeah. one t i remember one time um my sister uh i was talking about firearms and me trying to get them more empowered and so they can mm -hmm. like hey it's empowering like i don't want none of my daughters to be like uh, anti-gun and and fall for the okie, yeah. uh, fall for the okie doke when they tell them like no see because you know because look at look at these murder rate numbers now uh, you don't need that it's like hold on y'all yeah. keep telling me minorities are oppressed well ain't an armed minority harder to oppress there you go <laughs> yep. i don't want to yep. be oppressed but but True. but to all the uh, all the women out there but like especially um i mean even my mom bro my mom is like you know she's up there in age she's a senior right and yeah. she got mugged one time at a, at the Walmart mm. the Walmart parking lot in Almeida, 
It was like oh, man. a couple kids, you know, one distracted over here and one broke the window and reached in or whatever, like purse snatching, right? Mm-hmm. Just little smash and grab type of shit. And um, so I even mentioned to her, like, you know, I, I know you've never held a gun or anything like that, but, you know, yeah. uh, just, you know, be, it's a tool. Yeah. You know, but um, so so what you're reaching a lot of people and what what's some of the feedback that you feel that um like just real houstonians like how how overall do you feel like you get a lot of resistance to that like oh no like guns are bad you know what's crazy uh so i tell people i network uh everywhere elevator um I, let me see where's the weirdest place can't really i can't really i don't really know the weird maybe the club maybe pass out cars in the club I used to pick the cutest chick <laughs> or the chick with the biggest butt or whatever. But it, one out of every 70 people was like, oh, no, I don't like guns. Or, oh, no, no, no. Ooh, the guns are bad. And there's been a few times where I, I've had to enlighten them or, like you said, empower them. And I go, okay, what would you do right now? You leave. You go outside. God tries to rob you. Grass tries to follow you in your house. Worse, worse than Rob. Rob, you could just give him the property. Yeah. Guy, guy tries to sexually assault you, you know? And she's like, I'm going to just give him the purse. I said, okay, what if he get the purse, but he want more? Maybe he wants you. Well, I mean, you know, and I say, you know, sometimes you give up your all and they want more. And so I've had people tell me, I had this one chick tell me, she was one of my neighbors in my old apartments. She was like, well, I mean, I never put myself in situations to where I would get robbed or oh, get hurt. Oh, man. You could be at Whole Foods, yeah. bro. Yeah. And I go, and I looked at her and I was like, huh? And she's like, yeah, I don't I don't really go places like the bad places. I oh. said, do you know where we live at? I said, do you leave your house? I said, we downtown, but do you know how bad the area is? You know, I always encourage people, uh, the Citizen app and the Next Door app. Those two apps, and I have, like, multiple backup phones, right, just in case. And I have them in certain neighborhoods that are that, that I like to promote in, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, downtown, city center, you know, the Galleria, Highland Village. I can see the crime by what people post. And every now and then, the police will get on there and say, hey, y'all, look, there was a robbery at 7 a.m. at the Apple store. And I show her, I say, look at this. Look at this list. There's a section, a category just for crime. And she's looking at the list and she's like, oh my God, our apartment was hit, burglarized. The vehicles were burglarized three times the last week. She didn't know because she worked during the day. And by the time she got home or by the time she left for work, the crime scene was clean. And I say, now what if this car is you? And you leave and work at six o'clock in the morning with your daughter, mm. half sleep, not aware. No, no not, type of weapon, just whatever little kicks and screams. No protection. And then I say, guess what? And you never know. People look at you and, and record you instead of help you. Now let me now let me throw this in there for your arsenal. Ready? And now yep. this now everybody listening, do not be triggered. I am Mexican American. <laughs> My parents are from Mexico. My, my parents are immigrants, so what I'm about to tell you, I know I missed it. They can't deport us all. I know, I know, I know. I know I took a picture with, you know, with Beto and stuff like that. But listen, <laughs> tell them this. Not to mention, after you tell them about the apartments and the, and the crime on the Citizen app, be like, not to mention, yeah. uh, the border is wide open. Like, you yeah. have all type of cartels, sex trafficking. You have, like, MS-13. You got, I mean, you know, cartel, for real cartel, not... Cartel little brother, for real, for real. not 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 cartel little brother from the other from from America. Oh my little cousin over there in Dallas, and he holding it down. The real guy. Yeah, they they them <laughs> them them are over here. Um, that's a big factor because all this talk about snatching up AR-15, snatching up guns, and and uh, of course I got to tiptoe around this because you know th- there's some bad stuff that is, you know that's going on in this world. It's a lot of evil. I don't want to talk about that right now. Um, but all this talk about snatching up guns from the citizens and the good guys and making it harder for the good guys to get what they need. Uh, Officer, Officer Tatum made a good point. He said, they got 3D printed ghost guns. Right. He's like, you're not going to be able to snatch them up. He said, the border's wide open. 
guns going back and forth along with money fentanyl people and probably fighting age men mm -hmm. as if it were an yep. invasion uh yep. buku terrorists uh hella rapists like a lot of people everybody i don't know how many afghani uh listeners we have but do not get triggered it is a it is a fact that in europe they had such a bad refugee crisis that you started having no go zones red zones and because the politicians wanted to look good and be politically correct they would tap dance around the fact that dudes from these countries like afghanistan stuff like that they coming from the countryside they got a whole different culture and they were just going around raping little french teenage girls for little boys like germany buku rapes and i say that to say this America, yeah, we the melting pot and all that. I love how diverse it is. I love my Vietnamese food. You know, do not take yep. that. But, but the fact of the matter is, is right now, they, the average American has no idea what's going on at the border. And it's a known fact. Um, you had that operation, uh, Fast and Furious, where mm -hmm. they were moving weapons, selling weapons back to the cartel, cartel shooting up Mexicans and everything else. But uh, that's, that's one thing, man. Like, every time they try to talk about the blaming the guns for everything it's yep. like y'all not gonna be able to confiscate all of them and if you keep making more laws criminals don't obey laws well let me piggyback off of that so when when we're talking about this and then you got sanders tactical performance doing what they do how do you uh combat people that see our vp or even our our you know president say things like assault weapons have no place in a civil society like how do you how do you educate them when they are being miseducated by you know our leaders on television every day I always tell people uh, we have to look at our history, you know, um, like Beto, people like that who don't want the guns, right? And I get that. But if we be really, really real, um, uh, Caucasian, the Caucasian, you know, uh, group of people introduced those type of weapons, right, to, to keep control and power, right? over the people who they felt were, were beneath them. And I, I, I don't feel like that's everybody's reasoning right now, but it's not fair for certain people to have rifles, right? Um, I have clients, you know, that have 50, 100, 150, 200 guns, 10, 15,000 rounds of ammunition. I guess what they don't do, they don't tell people their business. 15, 20 rifles in the safe. <laughs> You only got two hands, right? But I think that if they can have it and they're good people and they just like guns and stuff, I think I should have it too. Now, should we do something about criminal background checks? Sometimes we can only do so much. And I tell people we can't stop everything. Look at the robberies and, and the crime. When we look at the police, uh, you know, when we look at the news, you hear Chief Fender and Sheriff Ed say, hey, you know, this year, crime went down or this year crime went up. Well, there were certain things that we put in place to make the crime go down, but we only have so much funding to keep the crime down. The only way when people ask me, hey, how can we decrease this crime or how can we decrease people in the community, community being victims? We got to arm some people. We got to give them people training. And sometimes it's going to be the same weapons we want to take off the streets. I feel like if that guy at the police station, you know, right? They have rifles or whatever. And I think if my grandma want a rifle <laughs> and she know how to use it and she's proper, yeah, why not? But like you said, they can't take them all. And I'm not saying dump 100,000 more out there, but what I am saying is maybe we should get people properly trained. Maybe we should do better and put money in mental health. Uh, I, I want to say this, and that's an excellent point. We can, all, we can definitely uh, talk about the mental health aspect. Bro, I think, man, as part of your branding as well, and and because we support everything that you do, so so for example, we want to help make it cool. Like like there, there's nothing yep. to me. There's nothing cooler than a well trained, like especially minority. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like like lately in my shows, because I've been very vocal about being pro Second Amendment, pro free speech. Just very like, man, we America can't first. we can't get yeah, America first. We got to stop with the okie yeah. doke. And I, I'm Mexican, and I'm talking about like, hey man, this is not sustainable. You know, they got rape trees, and they they uh they leave the underwear on the trees on the branches as trophies, and this is like real deal shit happening. 
but there's there's nothing cooler to me than to see like a minority family or just like you know a, a black yep. family mexican dude just just minor you know asian I, I got a meme in my phone where it says uh armed minorities are harder to oppress and it's an asian dude it's an asian dude with with uh his big ass gun but like yeah. but anyway in terms of like branding and just the culture yeah. um i feel because like this is what looks dumb to me when a bunch of little kids are shooting a music vi a rap video like for youtube mm -hmm. super low budget yeah. and you point a whole yeah. bunch of guns all stupid like you're young you don't know what you're doing that's like very it's very reckless and dangerous and that's how accidents happen and that's just like bad education um it, it, it's just like where y'all big homies at a real big homie is gonna is gonna want to make sure that all their people like like even the cartels we mentioned earlier yeah they're all super very trained yeah well to piggyback off of what you were saying i wonder how much and, and i'm sure sanders tactical performance could, could attest to this but how much like you asked how much resistance he got mm -hmm. you know in the wherever in the club in the community but how many people are uh, conversely are actually coming to you with more interest about like hey i need to defend myself or hey i need to learn how to use this or hey i just can't be a sitting duck yeah um, a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, wait until something happens or wait until something bad happens near them. And like I said, my job was to try to get people before they become a victim or before they become near a crime. Like one one of my homeboys, even the other day, he said, bro, I just watched somebody get shot. Me and my girl walking out the grocery store. I said, for real? Yeah, bro, we was on the south side. Somebody pulled up on him and just shot him. I got to bring my girl. And I say, I've been knowing you three years. Whenever you and your, whenever she became your girl, hey, baby, look, this is my lifestyle. Let me take you. He brung her. She got trained. And I say, look, in the law, especially in Texas, you have no duty to retreat, hide, or run away from a place where you have a right to be. When you're faced with a situation, you use deadly force to protect yourself, your family, or another person, a person you don't even know. A lot of people don't make time for it. They're too busy in life. A lot of people don't think they need it because they don't feel like, you know, I, I'm in a I'm in a nice neighborhood. I drive a nice car. I, I'm aware of my surroundings. I tell people, you can be aware of your surroundings. You be looking at that dude and run away and he still catch you or he still shoot at you. Like uh, this weekend, we hosted the free uh, civilian active shooter training courses mm. and I tell people running sometimes ain't good enough hiding sometimes ain't good enough fighting sometimes is the only resort but it's supposed to be used as the last resort but that's that's a we talked about active shooter training but I said hey self-defense is self-defense learn the stuff now get the education now because it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it it's a lot of times I go places and I come home and I'm like, oh man, that happened there. I was just there a few days ago. And I think in my mind, like, what if you would have been there? What would you have done? Oh man. And so I try to I try to keep my mind so, so on point. I try to keep the distractions to minimal to where if I'm out in public, I can be as effective and productive as possible. I don't think I could watch a guy getting robbed at a store. But when we me and my homeboy, we be riding around and stuff, I'm like, dang, man. What if somebody robbed a guy right now? He said, man, we're going to work. And it's something like I told people yesterday, at, whether it's at a, at a grocery store, at a school, at a church, somebody's going to have to sacrifice themselves. Somebody's going to have to say, it's going to be me or I'm going to put my life on the line to let these kids grow up. And so I always encourage people, come learn it now. Get, come get this knowledge now. I tell people, even if you don't shoot a gun, let me show you how to load the gun. At the least... Yeah, you might air it out, but guess what? You got a 99.9% .9 chance of you getting up out of there because these guys are ruthless, they're careless, and they don't care. Just like how we look at, you know, just that, say I'm a millionaire and I got cars. And I go pick a car. Boop, boop. Yeah, I'm going to drive it. I get into an accident. Oh, well, insurance. Hey, that's how them people look at women. And so, I, like like Chingo said, I got two daughters. I got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. And I tell them, it, it, my heart tugs every time I they go out they out of my sight. And I'm not saying that moms or other people can't take care of them like I can, but I couldn't imagine getting a call. And I told, hey, can't no HPD, state trooper, federal agent stop me from going to no school. 
If I got to shoot the window out and, and jump through the hey, if I got to drive my truck through it. But at the end of the day, that's all good and dandy. You know, that's on the back end. But on the front end, we got to know how to use proper self-defense. That's that's the key. Facts. Self-defense. Knowledge and information. Uh, you started talking about like the law. You said no requirement to retreat or something like that. Yep. Like yep. Th that's a huge aspect. Like just yep. people like just people knowing like, so if I want to take my gun with me. What do I got to put in the glove compartment? If a cop pulls me over, do I have to tell him? Like, can I have it on me? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. all, all that is, uh, is uh, you know, just empowering to have information and knowledge. Yeah, so question. What's one of the biggest myths that you think you have to dispel when people come to you for the first time trying to get a little more educated on self, uh, you know, just being self-aware and being prepared? Um, one of the greatest with minorities is when and where they can have a chamber uh, a loaded chamber or a, a gun, uh, a bullet in the chamber. Hey, my, my, my people say I can't have a, a loaded round in the in the gun. Or I can't have a magazine with the gun in Texas. Now, other states, yeah, there's a couple of states, New York, Cali, uh, D.C., they don't want that loaded gun in their car, Illinois, Texas. That's one of those, man, so how am I supposed to? I said, bro, load that gun. Ten, almost 10 to 15 years, they, they dispelled that a long time ago. It's just us. It's just up to us to either research and find it or find somebody who know it. Right. Uh, you can't shoot a person in the back. Depending on the crime. Right. Uh, in the law, it says over uh, property. It says that at nighttime in Texas, you can use deadly force to prevent a person from running away. After they've committed arson, burglary, robbery, aggravated robbery or theft. Right. The person still has to have your property, though. If that guy took my catalytic converter and I come outside, I'm trying to put clothes on and I come outside of my front porch at the right time and he got my catalytic converter, he's running, his back is turned, I can shoot until he drops it or he stops. So I tell people, you know, in my classes, I trick them. I say, hey, look, OK, you like your neighbor? Oh, I don't really fool my neighbor. That's cool. You pulling up to your dad's house. I mean, you know, here go your daddy. I point the gun at one of my clients, little fake gun. Hey, give me your money. And I always make sure my back is turned towards the person who is supposed to use the self-defense. Oh, that's my daddy. Boom, 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 boom. I say, oh, man, you, you think you go to jail? You just shot me in the back. You think my family go sue you? You just shot me in the back. Oh, my bad. I can't shoot. I say, guess what? Ain't no oh, my bads. And I say, this is your daddy. Would you shoot or not? Some people say, oh, man. I just hope they don't shoot my daddy because I got to wait. I got to turn around. Or I got to, hey, turn around. And guess what? He turned around with the gun. And some people back out. Some people say, I don't care what the law say. I'm going to shoot and protect my daddy. And I tell them, as long as you can prove and articulate what you did was justifiable and reasonable, you're going home. Yeah, they might come back on the civil side, but the law is going to protect you if your daddy or somebody is in the act of getting Seriously, serious bodily injury or death. You're preventing it or stopping it. And so I tell people, those myths can't shoot a person in the back, not having a loaded round in the chamber. All of those, oh, ooh, wait, that two, three seconds while you're sitting there, oh, 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 you could lose your life. Mm -hmm. Your people could lose their life. So that was definitely my top two. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great, man. I know you have a class to teach, but... Hey, that was a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Um, the law, a lot of people, you know, the law is a tricky thing. You do not want to get in trouble with the law. So it's in your best mm. interest. Your, your best to interest. Educate yourself. Yeah, it's, it's empowering to be educated. So where can they educate themselves with you, man? Man, so definitely Instagram. I always tell people, I encourage people, text me directly. 713-851-3803. Uh, I'm really good with texting, uh, emailing. Um, I have a lot of stuff out there. Uh, I'm also partnered with USCCA. Um, basically you, you get into a proper self-defense situation and you don't want to incriminate yourself. I always encourage people, even if you do the right thing, don't talk to the police without somebody having your back. Right. Um, so we just give it all out. Uh, I always, uh, throw out, you know, free classes. I'll be doing free active shooter training classes through the month of May and June. Come to the class. Of course, we do handgun training, license to carry. We do the tactical training. We do the gun cleaning courses. Um, 
uh, defense carry courses, shotgun rifle courses. Um, and then we also teach children ages 10 and up. Perfect. Nice. Uh, Perfect. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to have yeah, to come so, through, man. Yeah, We've yeah. been talking about this with our community, the podcast listeners and fans. We have a private chat room where a lot of them are very pro 2A and, and self-defense. So uh, we got to set something up in the near future. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing, I would love to have y'all. Yeah, I'll be seeing you soon for sure. All right, brother. We'll yeah, do this again, too, sometime y'all. in the summer in person. All right. Y'all have a good one. Y'all be safe. You too, man. Have a great class. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you.